Richard Petty is probably the most famous and one of the most popular NASCAR drivers of all time. The latter is evidenced by his 8 NASCAR's most popular driver award. During his long and illustrious career, spanning 1184 races across 35 years, Richard Petty has won the championship in NASCAR's highest league, which I'm going to refer to simply as the NASCAR Cup Series from here on out, a total of 7 times. That makes him tied with Dale Earnhardt and Jimmy Johnson for the title of driver of the most Cup Series championships. He has also won a total of 200 NASCAR Cup Series races, more than any other driver, and his grand achievements in the world of motorsports have even earned him a Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1992. Today, Richard Petty is still alive and well at the age of 82, but he has come very close to death more than once during his 35 year long career. In this video, I'm going to discuss the three occasions where the King, Richard Petty, came remarkably close to death. The first such occasion occurred on the 9th of May 1970 during the Rebel 400 at Darlington Motor Speedway. On lap 176 of that race, the steering on Richard Petty's Plymouth Roadrunner failed sending him very hard into the outside wall. The first impact sent the car ricocheting across the track towards the pit wall, which it then hit with tremendous force. The impact with the pit wall caused the car to roll multiple times before it eventually came to rest on its roof. Due to the absence of a window net at that time, Richard Petty's head hit the pavement multiple times during the accident. Despite this, and despite the fact that this was an era pre-safer barriers and pre-hands devices, he miraculously survived the crash. However, he didn't come away from the accident completely unscathed. His arm and shoulder ended up outside the race car and was severely injured. The most severe injury was probably a broken shoulder. The scene when Richard Petty's car had finally come to a rest looked utterly terrible. His head was outside the race car, seemingly pinned against the ground, and blood seemed to be streaming out of his head. Understandably, many fans, and possibly even the commentators, thought the crash had killed him. However, what appeared to be blood was simply a red rag that Richard Petty would put in his mouth while racing at the time. Apart from nearly bringing an end to Richard Petty's life, the accident is also notable for two other things. As a direct result of this crash, NASCAR mandated the use of a Richard Petty developed window net on the driver's side. Also, since ABC's Wide World of Sports had just started to broadcast this part of the race live on television, remember, live flag to flag broadcasts on TV were not yet a thing at that time, this crash became the first major NASCAR accident to be broadcast live on network television. The second close call occurred on Sunday, July the 27th, 1980, during the Coca-Cola 500 at Pocono International Raceway. Information on this crash is a kind of scarce, but here's what I could gather. During that 56 of that race, something happened to his right front wheel, probably a blown tire, sending him hard into the outside concrete wall. However, this first impact was not the one that caused the injury. As Richard Petty's car came sliding off the wall, Daryl Waltrip could not avoid it and skid into the driver's side, T-boning the car right where Petty sat. In an interview during a show of in-depth with Graham Bensinger, Richard Petty revealed that he had suffered a broken neck vertebra in the crash. He kept his injury hidden from NASCAR officials in order to be allowed to race, knowing full and well that another accident could kill him. Such a situation is unlikely to occur today because of modern NASCAR rules requiring an official serious medical lesion to clear a driver after a crash. The last near-fatal crash happened during the Grand American race, the Daytona 500, on February the 14th, 1988. Richard Petty was running in a pack of cars and he starts the back end starts to go around and it looked like tagged. it might have been tagged Quite by the wrong. car number 73 of Phil Barkdahl. And you can see Petty's car just framming and turning over up against the wall and other cars coming in. There's Barkdahl hitting him as he came by and the Eddie Beerswall car hitting one of the tires that came off the car. From another angle. That looks like the crash at Darlington years ago, Ned. Fortunately, it was staying on the nose of the car for so long, Ken, so it was not didn't look like it was really taking hard bounces down onto the pavement. 
This was the first super speedway race held with restrictor plates, which were introduced as a result of Bobby Allison's terrible crash at Talladega a year earlier in order to slow cars down and keep them from becoming airborne. However, as you could see in the video clip I just showed you, this plan didn't really work out and Richard Petty's car still managed to become airborne and started to roll after being touched and sent sideways by the cars of Phil Barkdahl and AJ Foyt. The car rolled over about eight times, hurling pieces of debris all over the front straight and damaging the catch fence as it rolled along it. Thankfully, as you were able to see in the video, the car pirouetted on its nose for a long time without hitting the pavement, which made the crash way more harmless than it looked, since the impacts with the ground are what would do the bulk of the damage. As you could see in the video, after the car had come to a rest on all four wheels, there was still one more impact to come. Brad Bedine, who had lost control of his car due to a cut tire, had no chance to avoid Richard Petty's stationary car and slammed into it. Despite the violent nature of the crash, Richard Petty survived the crash virtually uninjured, only suffering temporary vision loss due to the enormous g-forces he was exposed to in the crash. And there you have the three occasions where Richard Petty came remarkably close to death. I hope you found this video interesting and if that's the case, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Also consider checking out some of my other videos. And as always, sources and links for further reading and viewing can be found in the pastebin doc linked in the description below. Anyway, that was it for this video. See ya.